Young Dongo, the bed of Pumerio. Young Dongo, no. I am Martin Senkuge, and I'm a visual artist, a curator, and a researcher. I do hyperistic drawings, and my practice surrounds so much uh, on a skin condition called uh, vitiligo. I basically narrate stories and hypotheses and myths relating so much with this skin condition, trying to uh, understand the sources, the origins of this, uh, the, of the myth that surround this skin condition. And in my practice, again, I dig deeper into stories that focus on uh, beauty, pride, and love, and peace, and joy, and so much more, really. From the time I interacted with people living with vitiligo, that was in 2019, till now, I've come to actually realize that their, their narratives and stories suggest so much that vitiligo is more of a cultural condition than the medical it should be. If I were to tell you how I reached the level in which I am, you will not believe it wasn't easy. First of all, living with a disability and living with vitiligo, it wasn't easy. The thing started when I was in P6. I was studying those kinds of Kokonjero. Yeah, I was living with the sisters, sisters of little, little sisters of St. Francis overseas. So when it first came, do you know what they told me? They were telling me, you, it seems you first, where are they? Okay, they, okay, they perform rituals of the Balongo, of the Balongo, that is what, what they were telling me. When I came back to our end, this side, here they were telling me, because here in a Luru culture, they believe that there are some stones that what that brings rain, and those stones are kept with the chiefs of the with the clan chiefs. So according to them, that it seems I played with that thing. That is why it burnt me. Through some people that I was bleaching, so it wasn't easy. And this is because of the surrounding that we have in Uganda in generally Africa, uh, where cultures, different cultures associate this skin condition with spirituality and a lot of traditional myth and hypotheses. Uh, it is sad that cultural relativism continues to be one of the hindrances, actually, that is uh, limiting people living with vitiligo from being represented uh, here in Uganda and reason why most of them are marginalized, segregated, and they shun away from society, most of them really. And uh, my, my curiosity actually forces me to think of how I can invigorate something, a fresh thinking about fitligo. What is it that we can do together as society, as community, to bring up new narratives that talk about vitiligo and portray the beautiful side of the skin condition and actually the normal uh, the normal side of this skin condition not as what people see around and um, what they speculate following my trip to venice italy last year in 2022 november funded by british council uh, i joined uh, the team of five uh, mid-career curators from africa and we met with five uh, curators from UK in Venice, Italy, basically to have a cultural exchange and to actually see how people uh, represent uh, big audiences or big groups of people with international sovereignty. And I was so much inspired and uh, triggered to organize something that was close to the same, and that was a cultural exchange trip, more of a research tour and uh, digging deep in, uh, in interrogating uh, cultural relativism in this specific area that we went to, and that was Nebi district, Nebi and Pakwach district in the West Nile of Uganda. And um, we traveled with a group of uh, a number of people living with vitiligo, uh, visual artists, uh, well-wishers and supporters from the public. And this was quite an 
interesting experience as we are going to see. We had quite a number of objectives that we wanted to achieve by the end of the trip and I'm glad that you are yet actually to realize and discover that this was a great experience for almost everyone and nothing else that we can wait for. Let's just listen to what these people have to say. Thank you. Um, hello, I'm Octavia Lighton. I've been Tligo model. Uh, I, I've done modeling in um, lots of places and I've worked with um, a big number of people in the industry. Um, I've worked with uh, Vumbula, that is Morelli Agency. Uh, and also I've worked with My Scars Are Beautiful, that is Monique Katz. And I've, I've appeared um, on lots of festivals. To be honest, um, <laughs> I, like, I like the fact that we were many people living with Vindligo and I was free. And we interacted and we we learned a lot um you learn about your skin more once you meet someone else they tell you what they go through yeah kind of that's kind of similar but yeah it was fun um i like the hill climbing that's the part i i i liked the most yes the view was amazing people around were okay yeah um, I think we should focus on Uganda because there are lots of places we haven't gone to or rather they haven't gone to. So I think we should do more um, Uganda. We, we pick up people like us, we educate them and we strengthen them just to teach them how to live so that they learn more about uh, this skin condition. It's not a disease and it's not contagious. So. It's better you join, you learn more, and you make friends and see how to go about the condition. I'm looking at a girl out there, a five-year-old, or a boy in the village, a five-year-old, you know, because that's a confusing stage and that person doesn't know what is happening to them. I would like to like encourage the parents, uh, help them, help them. You don't know, maybe you also don't know what to do. Maybe you, you could reach out to us. Yeah, because there are foundations now. There is part of us, there is Val. I think you should like get contacts and you let them know what is happening with your child. Or maybe you yourself, you don't know um, and you need help. This phone would help you out. Hello everyone, I'm Tumukunde Ruth and I work with youth with a mission, YWAM. I am a missionary, but professionally I'm a fashion designer. Um, my experience, it was my first time meeting with people living with Vitlego and I was overwhelmed with what I saw because I got to see people that are willing to bring out what they have to the world to see and associate with everyone. So it really touched my heart and I was very excited to know more about how they got to have this and how they are living for now. Something that excited me most was on my way going to the northern part of Uganda where I got to see different features and got to see um, different animals on my way and the other thing was part of the culture and how they explained more about their marriages and which is different from where I come from. Yeah, the next trips I would suggest that we all everyone would engage each other and most of the times as me who works with children I would suggest that you would 
make it known to the children because at some point someone may get it on their way of growth so they would get prepared and know this is something that can come at any point and how can I get to associate with everyone that has it. Yeah, I think everyone should get involved because this is not a disease and it is not something that you were prepared or it is coming from a culture or something or family background. It is something that comes abruptly. So everyone should get involved so that they can create awareness, so that they can not be surprised when they get to have a child or their elders getting this so that we can live in a beautiful environment with each other in a loving place for everyone. I'm very happy to be part of this. I'm very happy to have gone on this trip because I got to learn different ways of culture and different ways of associating with people and encourage with everyone that I met. Yeah, so I'm welcoming everyone to be part of this, to love and if you meet anyone there, you can be the source of their happiness. So be part of this and you will be blessed. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. My name is Brogan Aaron Mwesigwa, and I'm a visual artist uh, based in Kampala. And I'm also a co-founder of Mundo Foundation. And I happen to be among the people that traveled to Nebi. And uh, personally, it was a great experience because uh, I'd never really traveled to, the, to northern Uganda. So I had a chance to travel and uh, it was really a good experience because I'd never been in a group of people living with Tilaigo, sharing stories, having fun, eating together. Uh, we did a lot. Personally, I played football, which I had not done in a very long time. We also had a hike and uh, what stood out for me was that uh, as an artist, I was able to see how these people behave, interact with a few of them and uh, really get to know their stories because art comes from stories and I'm a storyteller because you never know how much these people have gone through till you sit down and really have a chat with, with them. Most of them have really been traumatized, they've gone through a lot. So for me as an artist, because I'm going to create, it gives me an insight on how my work should look like, because my work should visually amplify, because it's one of the objectives of the foundation. As long as people are being born, vitiligo will still be around. So every day, there's a person that gets vitiligo. So I think there's more need for awareness each and every day, so that we let the the whole world know that these are people, they are normal people like us, and uh, they need, we need to end the stigma to make these people live comfortably in society so that they participate freely in, uh, in all the activities, in job, getting job opportunities, in uh, moving around the city, getting involved in different activities. Yeah, so I think as a, as a, as a society, we need to be more tolerant. I am a Haisiwe Alia Babu from a family of Mr. Babu Salim and Birundi Nora. I am from a family of three girls and I'm a vacist, senior sex vacist. I completed my A level from Kichamba High School in Ravenizi District. I was super excited to join people of Mondo Foundation when I was going to Nebi. At first, I was scared meeting other people. When I was told about people living with Bitligo who are like me, I was really scared. But when I met them, I was super excited because I didn't know that there are other people like me. And I, I, what I enjoyed most in Nebi is when we were moving around to different places. People were all staying at us. We were, like everyone was surprised seeing us, which, which gave me more confidence because we are creating awareness among people. People realized that we are also there. Uh, 
when we went for culture nights, and maybe there are traditional dances, there are stories, they were super exciting, they were very good. When we went to Jipiri and the Bong site, and also the mountain, the rocky mountains where we climbed, and the area was good. And visiting the chief's place where we went and planted the trees. The next trips, I suggest maybe we could visit some schools in the areas where we go. We visit some schools because in schools, most students, if there are, there is someone with vitiligo, we really pass through a lot. Because I, as I personally, I pass through a lot when I was still in school. Everyone would see me differently. But when we go to schools and just visit them and let them know a little bit about vitiligo. And I suggest, like, we in Uganda, we have we, these areas have uh, public hospitals. We could let the chairman or the healthy, the people in charge of health in those hospitals to bring more people, like on that day when we visit the area, so that we can let the people know about more about Mitlego. They will, because the, when they bring more people in the society, and we tell them a little bit of a uh, little information. We tell them more about Bitligo, at least they, uh, they will spread it outside to wherever they go. So that even if they meet someone else there they, and they're talking about the person, no, they'll be like, no, that is just Bitligo, it has no problem, it does not spread. They will also spread the information. We, we still have a, a, a big work to do uh, about creating a, awareness uh, about vitiligo because uh, very many people are living with vitiligo out there in most in villages where and they don't know or they do not know much about vitiligo for them they still believe that uh, we are burnt by twins hard and uh, I think we have to create more awareness others with vitiligo are still living in fear they fear to move outside they fear and uh, also some people don't want to, they still discriminate as people living with vitiligo. And others do not want to give us jobs, what, because they, they don't know much about vitiligo. They think maybe when you come to work uh, there, they will, they will, you will spread it to them. I want to be an interior and landscape designer. I want to make people's houses beautiful and compounds look nice and amazing and besides that my heart inspires me to work, do a, an orphanage not only of course of people living with it Lego but other people because I personally have been helped through, uh, through my journey of education I've been having very many people who have supported me who have shown me love so the love they have shown me, that's the same love I want to show other people out there. That's the help I really want to carry out out there and also inspire people living with Bitligo that they can make it. Those people out there who know who don't know about Bitligo, the kids out there who have Bitligo and don't know about it, I would like to inspire them because me, as Alia, I was also inspired by models. I was inspired by vaccines with vitiligo. I also knew that I would one day be someone. And I also want to inspire more people. My name is Echilo Obed. I'm from Goma, DRC Congo. I'm a student. I am an entrepreneur also. 
I do liquid soap. I also have a company called The Work for Yuji. You can check my Instagram and you'll see the great work uh, we do. Uh, the first time I met uh, these people, it was a photo shoot that uh, Martin organized as Mundo Foundation. So there were kind of few and it was too much, kind of maybe what I saw at the trip. When, we, when I entered the bus, because I was outside, most of them, it was raining that day, most of them were in, inside. So I met the few people I knew because uh, they were waiting for us. But then when I entered, I was kind of surprised. I'm like, oh, okay. So it was, um, it was surprising. I, I was really, really not expecting that because there were many. Okay, me personally, I didn't know about these people. So this was kind of new to me. So this time I spent too much time, three days with them. We'd be together the whole day. We share almost everything. So after some time, I reached a moment, a point where I was so used and people around could look at us. I'm like, oh, wh wh why are these people looking at me? So then after some time, it comes back to my mind. Oh, no, 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 they're not looking at you. They are looking at the people you're with. So that was really the experience. I really liked everything. Uh, all the activities that were organized, I really enjoyed every moment. Most especially, I didn't uh, spend too much time with my people in the village. My, uh, here they call them judges. I didn't really spend time. I don't really know about my culture, all the details. I hear about what they believe, but I, I didn't really spend more time with them. So this time I could, I could be there with the chief of this clan. I could listen to stories, what they believe. So I really enjoyed all that moment. Uh, I suggest that we, we reach out to kids. Yeah, I believe that kids catch things faster than adults. Yeah, so the moment a kid is convinced about something, they get easily used to it. Adults, there's a way they first think too much. When they see something, they want to understand what this, what, how, how, how. So they really think too much. So I would like to first go to schools. We teach kids. We tell them what, what's, what's this. And, um, and also show love to the people living with vitiligo. I, I won't say it's only for the people living with vitiligo because um, the more we are with them, the more they feel, they feel, um, they feel good. Okay, they just feel like at least there are people who can, who can understand and, and maybe know what it is and they welcome them the way they are. Actually, I believe that the moment you understand this and you're okay with this, anything can happen. Uh, it can be you or anyone else, your children, and you get to know that this is a normal thing. Yeah. So it's not only about them, but it's also about you to get used to it and understand what it is. Uh, I, I want to be a furniture designer. I want to make furniture for a relaxed moment. I've, I've, I've been raised in an area where we are now kind of used, or maybe we see war almost every day. So uh, I don't think I will really fight for <laughs> my country or something. And like in the way of also holding a gun, but I want to contribute more on, uh, on their mental emotions and all that. When they, when, they, when they sit somewhere, they have that time. They also have, they, they, they get that moment where they can also relax. When you go back home, when you're at your office, you just feel at peace. Uh, uh, about me, myself, I never used to be with people. Actually, this is something that I'm learning and I've learned uh, 
I've learned from different people. I studied at a, a single school and I never used to be with too much people around me. I came up and I believed that you can achieve more when you're together, when you're very many, yeah. We had a number of objectives uh, on this uh, study tour, research tour, or a fun tour really. Uh, more of experiential kind of uh, research and we wanted to know a number of things on this trip. So the objectives, uh, one happens to be um, to meet with people living with the Tlaigo in West Nile, that is Pakwach and Nebi districts. I'm 51 years old. Oh. Oh. And for the <coughs> purpose, I'm married. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm married. I have five children. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Doing this diploma, and one has completed senior four, stranded at home. One is again in senior four, the other one also is in the last one is senior one this year. So I wish you all pray for me. I'm from Navy District, my home is down there in Parongo, sub county. I'm a farmer right now. As you can see, we had quite a number of experiences with these people who we met living with Vitligo, listening to their stories and understanding the kind of experience they go through on a daily. Uh, my name is Bitum Dennis. Uh, I'm an entrepreneur. My biggest passion is doing art and crafts. And uh, I've lived with Vitligo for the last 17 years. I'm so passionate about uh, helping young people. Uh, part of this hub, I'm a stakeholder. Actually, whenever there's a program, uh, Plan International writes direct to me on a headed paper. So it's a pleasure to be recognized by such an NGO. And the number of NGOs within this community that uh, give me opportunity, I also volunteer myself. I'm Dr. James, a retired civil servant, a journalist by profession. Uh, we started New Vision in 1987. Uh, then I worked with uh, Uganda Television and Radio Uganda. Then uh, transferred to Navy as the district information officer. Retired in 2005 at the age of 42. Because I wanted to settle down and do other things. As of now, I'm going to share with LC1 of my, of my local cell here. Uh, so I've lived with this, with the Ligo for the last 15 years. Young Gidongo, the bed of Pumerio. Young Gidongo, the bed of Pumerio. Uh, the other objective was to uh, explore the less and uh, the less known cultures of Uganda and uh, try as much as we can to influence new imaginations of new possibilities and this was quite uh, an exciting uh, kind of experience that we had with this uh, aim. We saw how actually we were able to bond and have new kinds of conversations evolving every day because we spent about three days the other side and every day had a new kind of feeling, a new experience. Well, 
we are giving back to the community, you see. Because what Makerele students have done, they have helped our community. Our community of Navy. So on the behalf of Navy District Local Government, I'm really very, very grateful and I'm happy. And I would like to extend my sincere appreciation to Mundo Foundation. Because I know it is a good job. That is why we are able to get this. So we are very, very grateful when you go back. Convey our greetings to Makerele students. Tell them that it, Navy people are very, very grateful for what they have done for them. Thank you very much. And I will report this to Chairman Nelson Pai. And on top of that, we yeah. also want to reach our thanks for British Council making it possible for us to be here. Because all the transport, the meals we are having, and everything is all by British Council. And yeah, I mean, we thank you so much. And thirdly, we wanted to understand the limiting factors actually that are, uh, that are hindering the representation of people living with vitiligo in West Nile. What is it that uh, goes around in this community, in this society that limits people from actually getting involved in everyday work, getting uh, out there as well. What is it that keeps them behind, that keeps them inside in relation with cultural relativism as we thought it should, it might be. You know, people claiming and saying that this is how we do it, this is what we believe in and no one else can change our mind. Medically, our concerns means one. And in this concern, the government of Uganda tried to address issues of health in what we call the minimum health care package. I'm not sure if any of you have ever heard of that. In other words, in Uganda being a developing country, we do not have all the resources to offer health services to everyone to the expectation of each and every citizen. However, in line with the SDG, the Sustainable Development Goals, number three, health is a key resource. If you're not healthy, there's nothing else you can have in this world. The other objective that we had was to create grounds for self-expression and instigate self-esteem in many people living with vitiligo, both in West Nile and Central Region, because these are the two groups of people that we had meeting in one space. And the self-expression kept, kept on growing, uh, you know, as we kept on having our events, well-planned events following each other. Chronologically, we saw uh, smiles beginning to come up and excitement uh, began to, you know, uh, come up within, uh, within the souls, we started feeling the warmth. By the time we reached the last day, actually, people never wanted to come back to the central region. We wished we could spend much more time there. The other important uh, objective that we had was to bond the artists and people living with vitiligo and the volunteers, the supporters, the well-wishers, having a, a group of people on the same trip uh, with or without vitiligo. We want, wanted to know what is it that can, uh, can, can come up, you know. What is that new language that we can create in terms of living, in terms of uh, economics, in terms of partnerships and collaborations on a number of things? And I'm glad to report really that we came back and people had really connected with friends. They had made new friends and more so we became a bigger and strongly grounded family, which really excites me and warms my heart. Young Dango, the bed of Pumerio, 
Daluo is a part of Luo community. An Abashu is Kumai. Here are his words. Wabinu Kakae Gimukelua Uti Kalsha. We have come here to share experiences on culture. Dong Wan Wabinu Wakani, Ninwango Rieko Kitamuma Kuakua for the Yanin, Karinu Dan Kuakua for the Yanin. We have come to share ideas on how to. Otherwise, those were the main uh, key objectives that we wanted to discover, that we wanted to, uh, to, that actually instigated our setting off to go and explore this, but also ultimately to have fun, which we did. I personally did. Yeah. Bazina, 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 Bazina,